Hi, this is Sean Woldermuth. Welcome back to Coding Shorts. Today I'm going to be talking about OpenAPI and Swagger. But before we get to that, I did want to throw in a short plug. I'm going to be having a workshop on pragmatic architecture for .NET Core. If you're interested in upping your skills and understanding architecture in this space, click on the link in the show notes. That'll take you to more information about the course. So as .NET developers, or .NET Core developers more specifically, we're using the long-term support .NET 8, most of us. .NET 6 just went out of support, and .NET 9 is going to be short support. So it's really where we're at right now, and everything works fine. We do need to take a look at what the support for OpenAPI and Swagger is going to be in the future, because Microsoft's making a big change. I know some other YouTubers have already talked about this, but I want to take it from a different tact. Let's get started. I'm going to start with this little project I have called Bechtel Server. And this particular code is going to be available on GitHub slash Sean Wildermuth slash Coding Shorts. That's where all my examples for these videos are. There's over 100 of them now. So if you're curious at just looking at a lot of code, it's a good place to go as well. Let's go ahead and actually look at the project file. And you can see we're targeting 8.0. Don't have to worry about the rest of this. But we're also targeting Swashbuckle, which is a wrapper that allows you to have open API being generated generated for you, and Swagger UI, which is a website that you can use to test your APIs. So let's just see what this looks like before we make any changes. And if we go to Swagger as an endpoint, we get this, what might be familiar to a lot of you, a website that includes all the information about the APIs we have on our project, including being able to go ahead and set actual values. So I could look at this first call that's just get all the films. And if I click try it out, I can go ahead and just execute these. And you'll see that it's going to return a long list of all the films that this server supports. Very useful, very interesting. This is likely not going to be easily supported as we go forward. So I want to talk about some options because what is really happening with Swagger is a couple of things. So if we go to the swagger.json, this is actually an open API 3.01 file that describes it. And that UI simply uses this open API spec to go ahead and build that web page for you. That's really what's going on here. So let's go back to the code for a minute. Let's talk about how this happens. It's probably is a review for a lot of you, but I'm going to go ahead and just assume this is project is only API based. There's no UI. What we'll see is when we register our project, we're allowing ourselves to generate the swagger by calling the special method that is supported by that library. And here I'm going to say what the doc is, the open API info for the entire document itself. You may have seen these in the UI. And then down here, I need to actually map Swagger to produce the JSON and Swagger UI to produce the endpoint that is that UI page. So for us, just at first breath, I'd like to get rid of the UI. Just going to get rid of this, and this is still going to generate that JSON file for us. I want to show you that there are alternatives to the Swagger UI. In some cases, some are quite good. If we open up a new tab here, we can see that this is a project called Supply IO Elements. And this has support for creating a page that reads that JSON, that open API document, and to my mind, gives you a somewhat better way to do this. Now, I'm not advocating that everyone switch to this. What I'm advocating is that Swagger's UI is useful, but might be going away in future versions. And there's a ton of different solutions out there for doing that sort of web page. And I like the elements here because it doesn't really require anything from our server. In fact, all I'm going to do is just include it on a page. So we have this web component version, and I'm just going to come over here to our project, and I'm going to create a new WW root, which we don't have since it's an API project, and I'm just going to say API.html. We come back over to our web component. Let's copy the whole thing and replace our HTML with it. A couple of things you may notice is it's pulling in the style sheet and the code all from a web component in Unpackage. So you don't have to install anything in your project for this to work. The only thing we need to change is this, which is this needs to point at this URL. This might not have the local host if you're going to be using it on a production server, but we'll replace that because that document just needs to be an open API document. Let's go ahead and save this. And last thing I'll need to change is in program. Let's make sure that I am supporting you static files. This will actually be able to be downloaded. Let's go ahead and run this again. 
And I'm just going to change the URI here to say api.html. We are still generating the same open API, but this is another solution for actually working with it. I like this a little better because I find it a little more compact. We can see the different schemas. We can see the different APIs. And if we go to that API years again, we can actually just go ahead and send that API request. Oh, that's years. If we go to get all names was defined in our API as the API name for these. These just have the URLs associated with them. But this get all names is that API films we saw earlier. Let's go ahead and send the request. We can see here, actually make it smaller. It's a little easier to see. You can see the whole response here. We can actually see the headers if we want. And it even is going to give us the way to launch this through curl or what an example of that response is. And so this isn't changing anything about how you're building your API. It's simply allowing us to do the same work without having to rely on someone else's API. You have choices and you can see with this project that the choice of just including an HTML file is simple and easy. And so you don't have to necessarily opt into a lot of those things. So let's stop this for a moment. We're going to go up and add a new dependency. And this new dependency is a project that actually already exists and you can use today. It's Microsoft Open API. I'm going to go ahead and include that. Now we can actually use it in our app. So let's comment out all of the swagger stuff. So let's get rid of the endpoints. Let's get rid of the swagger gen because it's this code that's going to be going away eventually. So I want you to see what you can replace it with. Let's get rid of the app swagger here. I'll leave it commented out so you can see where it's actually being generated. That's really all we need right now. And what we'll need to do now to replace these is actually add a new package. And what we're looking for is this Microsoft ASP.NET Core Open API. Now we don't want the 9 version. Let's go ahead and get the latest stable version that's 8.0. Just uncheck that include pre-release and it would have been a little clearer. Let's go ahead and uninstall that. And with that, if we open up that API, we can actually annotate these with with open API. And there's a couple of different options here. One is you can pass in a configuration object and then that gives you ways to extend the different pieces of the open API configuration. Though it's still going to use produces, produces problem, all of those things you normally put in there. So in a lot of ways we can just use it as open API. Let's go ahead and do this to a few of them, just so we know that we're going to have this on a couple of them. But how do we actually get this to work? We can't just say app.useopen. API. There's no support for that. That's because this version of the library here is just allowing you to annotate it with extra open API pieces that Swagger can read. But that's not really what we want. We're going to need to upgrade the project to 9. And I'm running a preview version of 9, but I'll go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and upgrade our NuGet packages as well. Do need include release there because we do need the preview version. Let's go ahead and update it. Now in programmer, we're going to need to do a couple things. First, we need to, unsurprisingly, because of if you've built ASP.NET Core, you probably know where this is coming from, add open API. So add it to the services. Usually that means app.map open API, and I'm going to give it a string. You'll notice that the standard is open API with something .json. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and make it docs API open API .json. Now, if we run this, we go to that directory docs API open API .json. We're going to get that very similar open API spec we had, but this is built directly by Microsoft, and so they can be a little bit more agile in order to handle the different pieces, right? But what if we then take this docs? Let's go ahead and add it to our HTML here. And now we're going to get a brand new version of this based on the same idea. So you'll see that we're getting the same basic support here for open API. But I think it's important for us to think about more choice here. Microsoft wants to just focus on building the best experience for an open API. And there's a ton of community solutions for exposing a web page to be able to deal with the API, especially to test the API during development. Make sense? So this is kind of a simple concept. The Open API assembly is going to take over the role of producing the Open API spec for you, but it's going to give you the opportunity from nine on to easily pick what you're going to replace Swagger itself with. Now you don't have to replace it. Smart Bear, who's just, who handles the UI piece, might find a way to extend it, and you can continue using it. But I do want to give you sort of a nudge to look beyond Swagger at other solutions that can do the web pages where you can manipulate 
manipulate the API and test the API because you might find better solutions for the kinds of things you want to do. Because this whole piece here is just code and you can use it in your spa applications or you can use it in server side to render certain things, you have a lot more control than just depending on what Swagger looks like, how it acts, etc. I hope this has been helpful. I just want to drop a quick plug, just like in the beginning of the video for my pragmatic architecture for .NET Core. You can see the sign up link at the bottom of the page here, as well as in the show notes. So if you're interested, the early bird, which is still available for $1.99, it's a full day virtual course, and it's going to cover what architecture is, and then the different ways to think about architecture in a more pragmatic way. Until next time, I'm Sean Wildermuth. Thanks for joining me.